Hey guys, and uh, welcome to Tully River Quail. Um, this is a short little video on how we make our winter watering system. I'm just going to go over with you the parts and components and how we do it, and also go over our uh, patent pending <laughs> drinker tube that we make and why we think it's beneficial. Um, just first, talking about the the water canister. You can get a used uh, cooler. A lot of times what happens is the drain valve breaks and people throw their cooler out. That drain valve unscrews and allows you to epoxy any type of fitting that you want on the bottom. Um, that's the flow out. So what we do is we use this float, which is a float switch, and we put a bulkhead through the top. All right. The float goes threads on the inside of this right onto the wall and there's a little elbow that comes off so what that does is that limits the amount of water that goes into the container so you can actually hook this up right to a hose and it will only fill up till it's filled All right the second thing we do is we incorporate this little low volume but high power um, two gallon per hour, excuse me, two, 2.5 gallon per minute, 12 volt DC pump. And this is a circulation pump and it's pretty heavy duty, pretty well made. It, it can run, oh, let's say a hundred yards, maybe not that far, maybe let's say a hundred feet and uh, probably carry up to 15 feet back in return. We won't be calling upon it to do that. But the reason I like to use this 12 volt system is that we're trying to make this all run on solar. So we can put this out in the field back in our uh, covey that we have, our Bob White covey back in the woods and put a solar panel up there and a battery. And that's with a little inverter, we can run this heater, which is a 500 watt heater. What I like about this heater that goes into the bucket is it has a long 12 foot cord so that goes into the bucket you run the pump from the outflow forces the water through and then it returns back comes back in here and the way we do that is i have a y valve at my faucet so basically i run the outflow to all the feeders to one of the y valves the y valve at the faucet and then I leave that open and then I leave the bottom one or the second part of the Y open and I run my return from there back to the bucket. Should I want to fill up my bucket after it's been used, I turn off the, the outflow and I just have the return valve. I open up the spigot. The water comes from the spigot using the return line and fills the bucket using this it only fills it up to the very top where we want it right to this line wherever we mount this in here and that gives you a full bucket without having to carry any water to anything um, pretty neat little system but what i really want to talk about is these drinker cartridges that i make um, the cool thing about this is that they're one inch so the problem with in the winter time is that these nipples freeze up okay so if you put these on a t on half inch pvc tubing with one of those t's that you do that's threaded there's not enough flow not enough water that gets into the neck of the t and these freeze up so having it right next to the pump or excuse me embedded inside the the the, the plumbing the tube gives it some more heat from the warmed water and allows this to move more freely so you don't get the freeze up as much plus the extra volume of water that you have with the one inch thick piping compared to the half inch thick that gives you more solid area more water it protects it from freezing as well so how we make these is this is a flexible landscape uh, coupling it's 18 inches. You can get them at Home Depot for about $13, $15. All right. So we mark where we want our nipples to be on the cage. And then I drill the holes using 
these step drills. You can see where I mark the, the distance I want to go. I use two drills. I use one to get the lower inside uh, thickness because these um, tees have a pretty high cant to them, a pretty, pretty uh, quick narrowing. And so I use this to start it, which is the small drill. It gives you a better pinpoint accuracy. I take it up to this area, which is where I want the final, the final thickness or the inside thickness. Uh, you can see that that's about the size of that, right? So that's where I want it to be. And then I go in and I enlarge it so that the thicker part goes up to my black line. When I when this drill is spinning, I can go right up to the black line. Another cool thing about using this one inch thick PVC, oh, sorry, is that the, the, the drill, the, the auger that you need to use to drill these out, is wide enough that you can actually get in there. These are hand threaded in, no Teflon tape. They would seal the way they are, but I'll put Teflon tape on them anyway. Um, let me just show you how this is going to fit, but first let me just show you the components. Obviously, we have these drinkers. Now, any cups or anything like that or drinker bowls are going to freeze, so you want to have something that just gives them enough to to get the water during the winter time. You can replace this with cups in the summer if you'd like, because these are all threaded. And then this is basically just a coupling. You can see it's a one inch slip fitting. So any bushing you can use, I'm using half inch threaded. That goes in one side, same thing goes in the other side. Then I use these nylon hose barbs and I'm gonna connect with half inch um, poly tubing and I'll wrap that in uh, foam insulation so that it doesn't freeze as well just to keep it out of the wind and keep it from freezing anyway I'll show you how I drill these holes but let me show you how this mounts the cool thing about this is that with the mounting this on the outside and mounting I can put this right on the side of the cage, zip tie it on either side, and I have a, a little on-off ball valve that I put on one end, and then I have a tube that connects to the cartridge from the next cage down the line. So I can shut this off and actually put a shunt in between if I need to take this cage out or if I sell these birds or whatever. I can take this out and put a shunt between the last cartridge and the next cage and run it while I, if I have to repair something, if one of these um, leaks, whatever, um, just take this off, put a new one on if I have to, let's say two of them are leaking or I need to take it off to repair it. Um, gives me some flexibility and easy to get to. So instead of mounting it on the inside where these are hooked on the inside, um, putting the tube on the inside where you rub the, put the insulation where the birds will get to it, this is the best way you can wrap it in insulation and it's nice, easy to get to and uh, very flexible. I just use these little zip ties there. But let me go back and show you how I drill these holes because that's kind of a trick. You want to be able to get a flared hole when you drill these. So you can see I started a couple but I'm gonna see if I can flip this camera around and show you how I just step these down so that I get the proper hole that I want. Let me see if my camera will... Maybe. Just maybe. All right, so you can see I've drilled, I've measured where I want them fitting on my cage the way I want them. I have an inch and a quarter, four inches, inch and a quarter, four inches. Here's my center line. I wanna be able to put a partition down the middle of the cage so I'll have two drinker tubes and be able to have six birds on either side. But let me just show you, I use the smaller, thinner one to start the hole because that gives me a more accurate hole Now I just get that started, then I use this other one 
to take it where I want. And here's where I'll go to the black line. Alright, now obviously I'll clean this up a little bit. I have a little, little flat file that I can get in there and clean it up. Actually have some dental equipment that I can use to clean that up. But let me just show you how nicely, see how, I don't know if you can see it, but this hole is perfectly flared to match the flare of this threading. So it screws right in. All right, now let me just show you another couple little things. Now, like I said, I'm gonna use this poly tubing with a half inch uh, nylon bushing on it, but you can use let me turn this back. You can put any kind of bushing on here. You could actually use uh, a fitting that fits for hoses where a 5 8 inch uh, nipple allow you to use an old piece of hose that you may have to connect the, the cables. And then you can connect this hose to this threaded hose, which is what I'm going to do on mine um, for the final part. Or you can use thicker 5 8 inch stuff with it's braided. This braided stuff's a little bit uh, more weather resistant, um, won't fracture. Um, I'll probably use some of this when I run out of the poly that I have, unless I just go and buy a spool of it before I start plumbing it out. But there you are, folks, my little uh, drinker tubes with a uh, one inch diameter inner diameter outdoor foam this thing won't freeze and the extra volume of water inside will keep her keep her flowing and keep it nice um, thanks again for watching i hope if you have any questions please uh please don't hesitate to ask i'd like for you to subscribe if you would and uh, if you like what you see let me know. Maybe I'll learn how to edit some of this stuff and get better videos for you. Say goodnight to my white wing babies. Good night from Tully River Quail. Stay free.